going on, guys, with Crew 3 Podcast. It was Rock with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Chris and Ricky. Well, Chris is here in audio and not video form this week. That's right. I am ethereal. Just get a gif of him saluting. It's going to be yep. something. I don't know get what I'm going to put head. on yet. I'm probably going to put uh, just the Wonka trailers as a, gi- as a gif. Oh, my God. Just, uh, <laughs> throw me his Wonka. Just throw, throw me a Joe Speaking, Exotic. Okay. Yeah, I no, we're not we're not rep- look, I, I put in like the one frame like supplemental message of vote for Joe Exact twenty twenty four last week. You're not getting a whole episode of it. <laughs> um but like okay, real quick, let's look, we 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 gonna spend the first however many minutes of the show not talking about magic cards, right? Because there will be magic to talk about because uh we'll be debuting um the good, the bad, the ugly talking about uh Wizards current marketing strategy and their current plans and with Explorer, oh boy. Uh, cool. We are going to talk about the recent challenges, which I think will lead into a little bit of uh, Chris, especially talking about all his recent Boros Pia testing, to give us all more of the inside scoop on that deck as it continues to kind of top the Pioneer charts recently. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some of our, you know, our Pioneer RCQ season's ending that is being Pioneer ends. But we're going to talk about kind of our what do you what are you guys like? Are you going to take an off season? You what, do you what are what are our plans during the next two? two seasons, right? So we're going to talk about that uh, sort of awesome. end out the episode here. Um, but yeah, so real quick, um, so I just had Chris and Ricky watch the Wonka trailer because, uh, number one, it's about people who made Paddington, so I'm I'm interested, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Number two, it really, it really, so it's supposed to be a prequel to Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka, right? And, and it, it, it makes me really question the Wonka deep lore now because, like, you know, Does we it? know that we know that the people, his his other coworkers, betrayed him. And clearly, like we're founding the factory with just a bunch of down and out people. So, like, why do these people become scumbags? Do they? I mean, at least we get to know about the chocolate mafia. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, the words "the chocolate cartel" were used in that trailer, and, yeah. and that caught me off guard. I, I don't like. I don't like. I don't like knowing that there's a chocolate underground of mean people that that make chocolate for the purposes of evil. You know. That doesn't that doesn't sound good, you know. My my biggest question though is like I thought all the weird candy was just kind of like saved for in the factory, right? But clearly he's like out showing people like here's chocolate that can make you fly. It's um, just it's just like why be are we selling that on the show again? AKA oh. just gonna be Joker again. AKA I no I don't think it's gonna be Joker again because like it's Except not gonna try like, to. Be- it's not going to try to be edgy, though. Timothy Charlemagne wasn't allowed to smile on the set of Dune, so now he's only allowed to smile on the set of Wonka. But it's mm-hmm. Paddington, director. I don't care. It it's does not- visually look good. I-, I will say that for like I-, I didn't. I ate a brownie earlier, and it wasn't the right kind of brownie to watch to watch this trailer. You you need to be you need to be in a certain kind of mood to watch this trailer. It was wild. It it's was not it that was out wild. there. There's just a lot of things that they just slide in a normal conversation that me and you would say with emphasis. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, no, the chocolate cartel. There was mentioned very much like, oh, you'll have to face the chocolate cartel. Like, that's a normal thing. Like, that's a regular thing that happens in the world. Or, yeah, the, the chocolate that makes people fly or uh, Mr. Bean is Catholic priest. You know, there was a lot of things that just get kind of glossed over that I, I feel it's really... it probably most likely an Anglican priest, not a Catholic priest. Those are different. It looked, enough, like, it looked like uh, Willy Wonka's chocolate was destroying the Vatican at one point there. Yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what uh, I saw in a giant flaming ball, right? It was rolling you know, down. and I was ready for little Nas to come pole dancing down in there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all, all I'm saying is, like, we're going to give it a shot because... I'm not giving it a shot. I'd rather you, watch... What is we? Why are you saying we? <laughs> um, <laughs> because I can tell you right now... This will the commentary for Wonka will be an extra life stretch goal this year. I would rather watch the movie where Timothy Charlemagne is a uh, cannibal, and that's a good thing. <laughs> um, See, okay, no, I'll give like, you this option: the bones and all. We watch, we watch Wonka, or we watch Cruella. Oh man, I think they're going to be the same film, so I don't I, think there's a choice better, to make look it. because actually, look, Cruella could end up being better because I don't think Wonka's going to start with his mom being drop kicked off a cliff by three Dalmatians. We don't know that yet. Okay, sure. <laughs> the world is their oyster. I, I don't know. I very much get a like, he's quirky. He's different. He rides on top of the truck. 
Wait, is know, that how does Cruella start with Cruella's family member getting yeeted by some Dalmatians and that's why they hate Dalmatians? Uh, so spoilers for Cruella. Yes, Chris, her, well, it's not her actual mom though, because it turns out uh, her actual mom is the one who ordered the Dalmatians, is a Dalmatian? to, eat, to eat her fake mom off the cliff. It's all oh, a very wow. important plot point, you know? We can watch it this weekend when you're over. Let's just watch all 100 Airbud movies <laughs> and that's like watching is that 101 Dalmatians, kind of, you know? Does that include our buddies? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Okay. There's enough of them now. I think the uh, the Angels should hire a dog to fit in the lineup between... Uh... Mike Trout and Shohei Otani? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they might do better. They <laughs> might do better. How do you have two of like the best players in the MLB on the same team, and they have like... The economy's in shambles. I don't think we're legally allowed to segue that fast. I don't think it, we can go it's from, real. from it's real. Cruella and 101 Dalmatians. The, Ricky's mind is blown because I shared with him that meme that me and Ruckman were passing back and forth that was like, every every Angels game features a headline that's like, Mike Trout homers that was a real three headline. times. Mike, Mike Trout homers three times while Shohei Otani does something that hasn't been done since Honus Wagner did it in 1915 as the Angels lose 10 to 5. And it's like every time. But that really happened. It really does happen. Ricky's been sending to me three headlines of actual ESPN headlines that actually feature something like that where it's like, like I, I didn't single, think it was real. A single, it a triple, real. a two hit homer and loses right. 5 to 10. Yeah, yeah, yes. I've had it League is, of Legends games like that, you know? It is I, unreal. Relate. Yeah, it is It is unreal. Well, we, the only... we won't need Crawl this weekend because we're going to watch Speed Racer finally. That's right. Speed Racer coming up. Is anything coming out this weekend for movies? No, because like, it's next... the weekend before Oppenheimer. And Barbie. Barbie is a brave marketing team. Let me tell Barbie, you. Barbie would be great. Uh, oh, yeah, they're you know coming the out. Mark... Go ahead. It was the best marketing team. Whoever is in charge of designing the custom um, popcorn buckets for AMC, for like this one, because I don't know if you've seen this, but someone's right idea AMC theaters. for, well, I will be to buy this popcorn bucket because it's ridiculous. Um, so, you know, like, you know, for, for, for Spider-Man, they had the Doctor Strange cube and they've done like cool stuff like that. Um, but for, for Oppenheimer, they've decided... For twenty dollars, you not only get a popcorn bucket, you get a cup for your drink because you, of course, you can't just have one atomic weapon. You need both atomic weapons dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, we need we need Fat Man and Little Boy, huh? <laughs> wow, that is, that is that is real. Yeah, yeah. I just want to eat my popcorn and not make a political statement, you know? <laughs> right, right. Can't make see a Barbie then. What if I told you that Oppenheimer, that Barbie and Oppenheimer also caused international incident recently? Oh my gosh! Yeah, Barbie did because, because those maps, those Don the by, map, the map, by the Donald. maps of the trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you yeah. heard of this, Ricky? What? Barbie's Ricky has better banned, things to do. Barbie's being banned from playing in Vietnam because at one point they show a map and part of the borderline is where China draw, draw, drew their sovereign waters into like Vietnam's space. And so Vietnam is like boycotting the movie. Awesome. The, uh, Hey, that's I a great, I think that's a great segue into, into our opening, into our opening magic segment this week. What do you guys yeah. think? Yeah. I, 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 I think got a lot of magic to talk about, honestly. I could talk about movies, but. All right. Yeah, all right. Uh, Ruckman, but, for yeah, whatever so, intro, for whatever yeah, intro we've so, decided here. So look, I mean, they, Wizards isn't going to do it, so I'm going to do it for them. I, I prepared a little something here uh, just to get the apology really going. I think I think we all need it. Um, we need it. Yeah. You know, Blake Blake should be doing this, but but I'm going to record it for you guys instead. Uh, so it goes a little something like this. Hey, it's me. I know you haven't seen me in a while, but we released a really prod <laughs> product that's not going to make a lot of people happy. But uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end that's, that's the, the thing I, I didn't have enough time uh look i'd just be happy that i learned a single chord with uh with my wife's ukulele having never picked this thing up before so uh can she play yeah. it uh she's learning it right now is that why she's so. good at quarters against the wall that's why that is why she's good against quarters against the wall yes 
All right. Well, we'll, we'll transition that into whatever opening uh, opening. I, I I hope our listeners understand that reference. By the way, I, I hope mean, so they have too. To at this point, right? Like the memes are everywhere. The memes are everywhere. The memes are everywhere. Yeah. Do you know what the right. funniest thing about the entire anthology is? Is it not a quarter shield? It's better than that because okay. they recently released Shadows of Innistrad Remastered. Yeah. In which a card that was not included in that set of 200 something cards, right? Uh huh. Was Cathar's Shield, which is oh. a functional reprint, reprint of a quarter, of a quarter shield. shield. Yeah. What? At common and not at uncommon. Mm, and it was I not see. included there. And so now they're including a quarter shield, the higher rarity one. Uh, all right, so, so all right, real we quick, gotta... those, if real quick, those that don't know, um, I, I, when they started listing off cards, I was like, guys, they just listened to our show and we're just like, yep, yep, good, good ideas, good ideas. Um, so the whole, but then it just kind of goes off the rails. So the yeah, whole list, after about right, six or seven cards. So the whole list, we already knew I don't want to blossom, Cyclonic Rift, and Deathrite Shaman. Then we got uh, Voice of Resurgence. Okay. Okay. All right. Xenagos, God of Revels, and World Spine Worm. Cards you only need one of. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got Court of Calling. Uh, okay. Not terrible. Abbot of Carol Keep. Which has, has seen play before. And honestly, when I was looking at cards that they could have included, I, I almost just said they're going to pick Abbot of Carol. I just had a feeling. I'm like... Abbot of Carol Keep is an easy one to cash in on. Yep. Cash in, quote unquote, for all the people. All uh, the Abbot of Carol Keep. And, and then, on. hey, you know, surely you guys want the Battle for Zendikar lands. I've got another problem with these. I've got more problems with the Battle for Zendikar lands. Okay. Yeah. What you got? All right. Let's look back at the great product. Let's look at good products on Arena, right? Okay, Let's look yeah. Back at Shadows over Innistrad Remastered, right? Uh huh, yeah. There's some dual lands in that set that are Pioneer playable, legal, but they don't see any play. The show lands, reveal lands. Yeah. Uh, but Wizards of the Coast did us a solid, and they were like, you know what? They're here, so you can have them. But we've made them uncommon because they don't see play. Mm -hmm. So if you want a budget option to some dual lands, you can craft these for an uncommon ticket on me. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying these cards should have also been uncommon. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got Prairie Stream for when they ban Lotus Field. I just, uh, I have no <laughs> words. Uh, oh, we also got Thespian Stage and Sylvan Scrying, though. Ooh, did we get hidden strings so the deck is playable? Oh, uh, Ricky, Ricky, that has a mechanic called Cypher on it. Oh, no. Um, that must be impossible to program. We got Shrapnel Blast. That's a good one. Uh, we, got a we, got, we got five of the charms. We got Golgari Charm, Simic Charm, Is It Charm, and Gruul Charm. I mean, Golgari Charm saw play. Is It Charm uh, saw play. Is it Gruul Charm is, is a sideboard like card. Why no Azorius Charm or Boros, right? Boros Charm, yeah. Like? Uh, don't worry though. Judge is no, familiar. There's no Boros charm. There's no Boros charm. No. Why? Uh, don't worry. You got uh, Judge is familiar, which um, Convoke has already dropped out of the deck. And uh, Omnath Locus of Rage. Uh, hey, Omnath speaking Omnath. of Locus of Rage, uh, that's that's Fire Shoes right now. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fire, fire shoes, shoes. sworn off arena, standing and, uh, up, standing but up. But it's okay as yet. long as they give us one delve spell. That's all we need. Any yeah, of there's it. a delve spell Take in there, right? One, right? Yeah, yeah, Ruckman. What's the rest Take of it? One delve uh, spell. Delve spell. Obzat Ghost Council. Is that that's Is that, that has some of the letters for delve, delve in right? there? It exiles. It's similar. Okay, well, what about there's got to be another one? No, that's uh, that's all twenty five. That's uh, wow. that's that's and all she wrote. Extra large twenty five card anthology. No good ones. Yeah. Um. I want to read. What? I want to read an explanation real quick, if we can. There was oh, a yeah, the Reddit post. That, yeah, there was uh, a, there was that a post Sharp on post? Reddit. There was a post on Reddit, and it was responded to by username Lee Sharp that has the Wizards logo. Yeah, you don't know and, who Lee Sharp is. Yeah, uh, not not sure, but they they posted something here, so I just want to read it real quick. I'm just going to read the first sentence or two 
um, that kind of give us an idea of what Wizards was thinking. And it starts off, uh, appreciate the post and feedback. We want to alleviate concerns that Shadows of uh, in a Thread Remastered and EA3 are the only steps we're taking towards bringing Pioneer to Arena this year. We don't have anything else yet, but we can say we're planning to to have some older cards added to Explore. Um, while Explore Anthology 3 uh, does bring Explore closer to Pioneer, that, re that remains the primary goal, but it's not the only goal. Just like Magic sets have different cards for different audiences, we saw $20 in Ricky's wallet and realized, whoa, we don't have that money. We should have that money. So Wizards of the Coast has decided to make... I would argue that these cards are going to make Ricky keep his $20. In fact, no, no, in no, fact, no, no. fun fact, uh, no. we could have tripled the sales of the anthology if you just put Treasure Cruise in it simply because I was going to buy two for our patrons if there was Treasure Cruise in it. I don't think that's, we can give them away. That's not that's not what we decided when we got together at the Olive Garden that's now closer to our to our mm. office. That sure. wasn't that wasn't in the discussion. Um, that's again, we needed a quick two minute meeting and decided that that's that was not in our best interest. Not in our They're best. They're going to speak about it at Gen Con. Yeah, the Gen well, Con. I, the, I, ooh, I'm buying a ticket. Gen Con is just going to be them saying, "Here's our product lineup for the next like several like for the yeah, next like year." I know. Yeah. So it's yeah. I mean, like, okay. Here's the thing, right? Also, real quick, the, the point of so so the anthologies and remasters when, in terms of different different audiences, they just call an arena anthology. Don't call it an explorer anthology. Like that is a very specific meaning in my mind. I don't know you guys. No, I think they're, they're trying the to cover for the fact that they wanted to release a garbage product and hoped that you would pay for it. That's what that's what this yeah. is. This, I this think is, is the money grab. Cards also I think made that like awful this. Lord of the Rings secret layer. We could be angry, right? Or we could be constructive. We can go Wizards of the Coast and your arena team. If you'd like, we're available. You can fly us out to your office and we'll sit down. We'll bring the cards and we'll show you what Pioneer is. You've never played it. It's very evident you've never played Pioneer. So let us play Pioneer with you and show you what cards people play. Uh, I, I literally don't think a single person on the arena team has ever seen no. a game of Pioneer, except for literally the Pro Tour Finals where they saw a World Spine Worm. I hear you. I, I think, like, I it think feels, that's what it feels makes like. Sense. No, I, I feel think, like, yeah. you know, hello fellow kids is definitely what's happening here. I think I think it's I think it's intentional. Um, I think I think that take is is a fine one, and it's something that I could have been on board with three years ago when, like, we again we had the remaster sets that were releasing, and we were paying them money to draft. The problem is that they don't they don't want our money; they want all of our money. That's right, the problem, right. and that's that's what we've seen consistently over the last two years. Is is money isn't enough? They need all of it. They have intentionally made bad products and put them out in hopes that they're just good enough for us to buy while leaving some meat on the bone for themselves to then put out more crappy products and hope we're just going to buy, 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 buy for infinity. Again, I, I just think that the last two years have have shown exactly that. The, what, again, the remastered drafts, the consistently poor arena products, the lack of putting cards on when every other digital client is putting tons of Pokemon just relaunched their whole platform. Yep. And has a great many playable formats on it. Master Duel's been kicking their butt for a long time. I think it's it is willful at this point, and it is very clear. They even say it in here; they're very clear where it's like, well, that's not the only point. The only point isn't just to bring Explorer closer to Pioneer. When you know that's that's what they've been talking about for a okay. long time. Again, can they I, just don't want to do it too fast. They I, go ahead, guys. Can I play a bit of devil's advocate here? There, yeah, there absolutely. is there absolutely. there is some reasonable. Like the two things we're talking about, right? The okay. main the main cards that are really making us upset are lack of delve and like hidden strings for like. The thing is, those cards I will I will agree do have mechanics that are a lot more involved and a lot more in depth than you look at the other cards they've included in this. Change now, the rocks. okay, 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 Ricky. Okay, can I, <laughs> All right, you're not All right, wrong. Go ahead. Go Sylvan ahead. carry to chain of the rocks, whatever. Let me just point out the things with these these two specific cards, right? right. So part of me under I, I will admit, I will agree with from the standpoint of if they are going to – these are two mechanics that are very heavily involved in the sets they are from. And if they are planning to do remasters of these sets, 
at some point in the near future, right? As you think of cons is going to be after, I'm assuming, Battle of Zendikar Remastered next, right? So... Please don't. We can skip that yeah, one. Yeah, skip, skip, skip that one. Just go to cons already. Um, so I can see them saying these are two very heavily involved mechanics. They are going to take too much time to get onto the program for the, especially being in a development environment right now with my current job. Uh, they do have to consider cost to work ratio with what this product is going to bring in, right? So the amount of time to get these kinds of mechanics built in into arena are probably outweighing what they want to put into the the, the anthology project, right? What um, is the difference? I, I will I will say though yeah. that there is the alternative here where if you do have the possibility, especially with how they've described how arenas card system and rule system works where they have said the arena system isn't based on hard-coded interactions it is based on the game engine interpreting the rules of the game and i would think that if you could get a point of having one or two cards of these mechanics into the game ahead of these larger bigger projects that that would then save your development costs on those larger projects when they come up down the road sorry what were you going to say chris I just wanted to ask how escape works. Like, as an additional cost to that, I have to exile cards from my yard. And so I, I am genuinely just asking, like, how much of a difference is that? Because escape isn't changing the cost of escaping. Right. Even if, though, even if the argument of we don't want to develop new mechanics into the anthology, right? Yeah. Even if that's the point, right? Sure. There's so many cards you can pick even very similar cards, right? We want yeah, to do I, cycles. Cycles are easy, right? Sure. All right. Flip walkers. Sure. Four of them see play. One of them is there to finish the cycle. Like some see more play than others, right? But like and, and that we have card... the and we know how to put the we know how to make the flip walkers work because essentially that's what happened with the flip All raiders the in the last set. Yeah, exactly. So We've got all that already in there, so we can put those, right? Sylvan Carotid adds no new mechanics. Yeah. In fact, you know, Paradise Druid is a more complicated Sylvan Carotid. Sure. And again, um, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong about those right. cards. I'm just saying we're like, really like, give us Delve, give us Delve. The like, thing is, I, I would have been okay with no Delve, right? Sure. If we had gotten more cards that mattered. Yeah. And also, like, if you're going to give us thespian stage and you're going to give us sylvan scrying it's absolutely rude to not give us have like hidden strings hidden strings sure like if you can't do hidden strings then don't give us the other two cards and just like let's think about it right yeah like and let's it, it, it is the, the problem is right like there are a lot of these cards on this anthology set that i would just be like these are fine like but the problem is when you look at like a quarter shield, um, you know, look, let's look at this, like the charm cycle, for example. Okay. Well, Gary charm, is it charm, ghoul charm, all have applications. Who is really pining for civic charm and Orzhov charm? That could have been Boris charm and Azorius charm. We wouldn't have cared at that cycle. Right. Right. Um, you know, uh, Obzat, Ghost Council, All Night Looks of Rage, whatever. Big splashy mythics. Um, I do think Obzat is somewhat playable in Pioneer, um, but that's another but conversation. the other one is better, right? Which one? The the Obzat from uh, Ravnica Allegiance is just strictly better, right? I don't know. Like, when, when I'm thinking of cards, because I, I'm not sure how much, like, like, when we made our lists, I think there were sure. some unpowered cards on there, but that was yeah. for, like, interest's sake. Right, well, like, yeah, I mean, number one, like we all put Del spells on there. Like, there, there are some interesting cards here. Don't get me wrong. There are some cards yeah. that see fringe play, and we were thinking of cards that would see fringe play, which is like, okay, I'm happy Shrapnel Blast is on there, I guess, but I'm not the excited about the quarter Blast. shield. Where I right, where I would be if the if the the anthology was better, right? If the anthology was better, I'd be like, oh look, that's a cool, that is a cool card, right? I'm thinking because I'm thinking like, man, we we print where we, we make the 10 most popular cards, well, now all of a sudden we're in business, right? If you make like the 10 most popular cards in the list that we're missing, we've got pretty close to Pioneer. And then we yeah. can talk about 25 filler cards 
like that was our thought is like these are some filler cards that are going to make the list with some of the obvious ones there are about three that three years in we can justify not having this right like it's been about years at this point there are about 10 to 15 cards i am actually actively like happy to like yeah okay i can see that with it's like the other 10 or so that these could have been anything else Right. Well, and again, I think I think we'd be much more excited about those 10 average ones if the 15 were good. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think it's like, hey, it's cool that we got a lot of cards. I don't think it's 10 average cards. I think it's like the the 10 cards I'm not happy with. I'm just like, why? The last one was really good, though. The last one was really good. Explore Anthology 2? Yeah. Like that one had uh, mostly bangers, right? Let me double check. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. But my point so, in this one, too, is like they can consider yeah. development costs. Uh, and again, Anthology, we'll... Anthology 2, real quick, sorry, Chris, okay. uh, was Displacer, Irie Interlude, uh, Brave the Elements, Soldier of the Pantheon, Ethereal Armor, Clever Impersonator, Dispel, Zulaport Cutthroat, Island of the Great Revel, Fiery Impulse, Rending Volley, Corsair of Crufix, Seder Wayfinder, World Breaker, Nylea's Presence, Reflector Mage, Sliver Hive Lord, Shaman of the Pack, Thought Not Seer, Codes Like the Great Distortion, Matter Reshaper, Mana Confluence, Mutavault, Nykthos. This is literally, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I think there's like two to three cards that don't see play in Pioneer here, right? Or yeah. haven't seen play in Pioneer. And those few cards are really cool to put on Arena for brewing in Pioneer, right? Sure. yeah. And like Mana Confluence, Mutavault, Nykthos is just Chef's Kiss, right? Like, mm-hmm. Thought Not Seer, Matter Reshaper, like, Shaman of the Pack for the Elf decks, Reflector Mage, like, Nelia's Presence has seen a lot of play in Pioneer, uh, Seder Wayfinder, uh, Port Courser, it should see some play, but it doesn't. Like, all three of the red cards are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, like, people are playing Clever Impersonator. Uh, Dispel is a card that has seen play in the past. Mm-hmm. I, st- I, like, I think we're making excuses. I really, I really think that the anthology. No, no, I'm saying the anthology ones, two was really good, I, and, and I'm telling you the opposite. I, I, I think and we're making excuses so. for really bad. But I don't get me wrong. Like I think, I think there's a world where that anthology is cool. I think with how many important cards we still have missing from Pioneer, right? Like the anthologies I've seen have been underwhelming. That, so you that's thought anthology thought. two was also bad. I yeah, thought I Anthology did. 2 is, like, solid, especially for when you look at what the meta was, like, when it came out. Like, when, like, when it's more Anthology 2 came out, like, December of last year, right? Like, no, for sure. I- I'm glad we got Nykthos. There are there are a few cards in there that I like. Most of them, the most of the ones that are not two of them, I'm not happy with in the world where we still don't have the cards that we don't have. Right? Like, don't get me wrong. I think Chain to the Rocks is a recent development as, as far as how important that it is and sure. things like that. But there's still, there were still, like, some of the cards from this that I think are important, like the Worm combo. Right? Um, uh, uh, um, yeah, but by this point in time, though, like, people weren't that deck wasn't combo. very pop. That, yeah, like, that wasn't a big thing when this came out either. It's just, I, I think mean, about, like, we have to think about, like, the, this anthology was decided, like, four months before this even came out. Like, yeah, I, my my mind my mind doesn't change. My mind doesn't change. I, I don't I don't think any of them were, Dang, were super that's impressive. The hard the line stance here is Chris, yeah, it is it all is. All anthologies are bad. No anthologies are good. This is Joe Exotic yeah. press secretary, Chris. He's hard yeah, line on the is, issues. That's exactly like, right. I, I, I think I am, that unfortunately we're going to get nowhere. Just screaming at wizards because they don't care because they got money. The thing is, like, if we can at least go like, hey guys, let's like look at your past work, right? You see how you did this crayon drawing in the lines last time, right? This crayon drawing doesn't look so good. Uh, yeah. You know, let's this crayon drawing kept like, our movie out of Korea. Out of yeah, Vietnam. exactly. Let's do more crayon drawings like the first one. You know, treat wizards like the children they are. You know, <laughs> they're, they're going to put their hand out for fifty dollars and go pay me fifty dollars and I'll consider it, and then they still won't do it, right? Like again, right, I, I, I think that what I'm trying to say, guys, is that like we're not going to buy this anthology, right? We're not four months in, we're not six is, months in. We're not going to buy it, but as we see with every other problem product that Wizards puts right. out, someone will buy it. That's what I want to see. I, I want to see what we the sales aren't are. The Dungeons and Dragons community who will like go right in the right. streets and burn their books, like right, right. right. Well. They can't buy this anthology because they have no money. Because they've bought 
Lord of the Rings boxes for two hundred dollars a draft box, right, right, and they're right. buying Commander Masters boxes for at least Commander, Ma- draft Commander box. Masters boxes are already dropping. Good because people they're, can't they're afford. Already like three hundred. They're already down to like three hundred. Yeah, I mean, also some of those mythics are kind of uh, terrifyingly awful. Yeah, but that's the Commander. Uncommon. That's a format I don't know, right? Yeah, you know, I'm just saying if you open a mythic rare insurrection, I think you cry. Hey, I'm going to yeah. start yeah. playing some Commander in a month or two now. Heck yeah. You're going to get, uh, I mean, time. they're they're guaranteeing you, like, essentially a Mythic in every pack. Not exactly, but you, like, the pack breakdown is kind of wild in that product. So. Yeah. yeah. But in, either uh, way. In the meantime, the... to show that I'm not all negative Nancy's here, I want to point out that, Pine. I know some people are burned out during the end of the season, but Pioneer right now does look super hot. It's it super sick really, when really you can good. just, like, not look at all of Lord of the Rings and all of Commander Masters or an entire anthology. What do you, now what we do you mean by all of Lord of the Rings? You only just don't have to look at the one ring. There's only one card you have to avoid. I just mean like, you know, as a pioneer, like if sure. you're into the pioneer world, right? If you're yeah. into the pioneer game, you can just like, it's been a nice summer, you know? There's like explosions happening in the distance, right? But in Pioneer Town, things are good, you know? Yeah. We're having a lot of fun. We're making thopters. Yeah, I think I think things are changing. I think that's where I've been a little surprised at some of the things I've heard from some longstanding uh, pioneer influencer streamers, whatever you want to say. Um, just because like there's there's new decks been popping up the last couple months, and again, I think right now like Pia Pia seems to be a lot of fun, you know. Um, and it's a it's a new hot deck. It's super inexpensive to play, and I know that's one of the big reasons that some people do not care about, but we do um, that. Pioneer is super accessible. I've met at the last FNM I went to, I talked to somebody who was like, I really care about, you know, um, being able to grab a deck and build a deck that isn't just like all the money cards for money's sake. And it was it was a different take. It's not even my take, but it was an interesting take on the last. And, and we got to talk a lot about the work that uh, Servo has been doing. Mm-hmm. And- I think I think that also, I mean, besides Pia, right? I think mm-hmm. I think Ricky played a looks like posted a really sick deck list. Oh we yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with the uh, Baral uh, Kari Zev deck. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so much fun. It's so stupid. Uh, it's like a seven card combo, but you know, I'm surprised you're not playing play... Chrome Sea Shark as an additional like. Here's a payoff from my big Delve spell. You don't need a payoff, right? Because you have like your win cons are like you have seven win cons, right? And the win cons are kind of hard to deal with. And Arlen's Epiphany is its own win con because it makes two birds. Sure. Burbs. Uh, there were also just plenty of games that I played where I just sort of became the control player and just Kari Zev like makes a Ragavan token. Yeah, and sure. the two of them beat down for four damage a turn mm. while I just keep the board clear, you know? Mm. And occasionally you get to do cool things like, you know, whoa, you're at 10? Well, let's just hard cast all around epiphany you know sure and uh finish you off here or you know cast chandra and just minus her yeah i mean when when i got to play with it somewhat recently in, in limited like baral and Kari Zed was a card i was just like wow this is this is a card that i wish saw more pioneer play that card is very impressive oh yeah it's just like it's just a little too slow for pioneer in general yeah for sure i mean uh my only loss was to like Lotus Field combo, which is just like if you're playing uh, Steam Vents, you can't beat Lotus Field combo like ever. Yeah. Uh, you just can't. No matter what you do, you think you can. You get attacked on the thirty thirty worm. It's not fast enough. They're going off like way faster than you're making. Usually, usually we're counterspelling. Yeah, I had counterspells that did not. Uh... No, that's fair. Enough. Not good I, enough. Yeah. I don't know how great it is, but I, it's a matchup that I played a couple times and and felt good. But maybe maybe it's not. Like I said, it, it was just the ability to be like, all right, well, I you you have less less interaction for my thing. It, it goes both ways, but you know, then they played Jermoka, and then the game's over. True, true. Or the Sphinx of the Final Word, whatever, whichever one is the better one of the two at the at the current. Yeah, the Final Word one's pretty good. That's a hard one to kill. All right, so let's talk. Uh, let's talk Pioneer Challenges now, shall we? Do it. Give me the links. All right. Here is Saturday, and here is 
Sunday. I mean, while, while, while I send you these, any any last thoughts, opinions on uh, on anthologies and how we're going to make become a historic podcast now so we can go play primetime? Uh, one, historic is a bigger garbage fire. And two, like, I will, I will always, like, commend Wizards of the Coast when they make good products, but I'm also going to equally dunk on them when they make absolute tone-deaf garbage products, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like... One of those happens more often than the other? Yeah, and that's a very fair thing to do. I feel like, you know, when they come out with Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty and it's like, this is awesome, right? They come out with Explorer Anthology 2 and it's almost all Pioneer playable cards that we needed for the format, you know? Let them know. Don't you don't doesn't mean you have to buy it, but it does mean like you know post positively about it, right? I mean, and you, then, I mean you, obviously we didn't care about the construction portion, but you, you you've been enjoying Lord of the Rings Draft Limited, right? Yeah, on Arena, not in yeah. paper because it's too expensive. I sure. would give like two thumbs up to Lord of the Rings Limited if the boxes weren't super expensive for no reason. Like, mm-hmm. Why are draft boxes still one hundred and seventy seven dollars? You know? Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be like this. Wizards of the Coast, you know. They gotta pay the the Tolkien estate charges a hefty fee for licensing. I uh, I bet, but I'm sure that Wizards of the Coast made it all back with the one of one ring and all the collector boosters they sold. You know. Yeah. All right. So these two pioneer challenges on Saturday. Yeah, let me scroll for a sec. Sorry. One second. One second. One second. In eighth place, we have Rapid Luis 08 on Rakdos Sacrifice. Seventh place, we have Night Night 131 on Rakdos Sacrifice. In sixth place, we have Remph on Azorius Spirits. In fifth place, we have Eggy Benny on Pia Boros. In fourth place, we have Soul Strong on Rakdos Sacrifice. In third place, we have Rosty 56 on Rakdos Sacrifice. In second place, we have ALMTG on Is It Phoenix? And then in the first place, we have A Shame on Boros Pia. Um, I mean, this card, uh, this whole top eight is kind of exciting. It's a big shift, right? Yeah. Uh, we now know that Rakdos Sacrifice is kind of like the big Rakdos deck moving in right now. Mm-hmm. And it really punishes... I mean, just a lot right now. I feel like that deck is just so punishing to so many uh, of the, like, aggro decks we were seeing before. Yeah, I mean, Convoke's nowhere now, right? Right, like, it's really punishing against Convoke. It's really punishing against Spirits and against Mono-White Humans, right? Uh, Like, especially, like, Mono-White, when they'd steal, like, your giant creature or your Adelaine attack, get another token, and then, like, then sack her off, right? Like. And then turns out moving moving four thought seasons into the main board uh, kind of helps in those awful those rougher combo matchups, which are still obviously not the best. But hey, you you can still maybe squeak out of game one now. I do like the uh, Phoenix players still in this in the finals here. Uh, I think that of course if you hit like things like Azorius Spirits, that's a great matchup for Phoenix. I've not yet played many matchups against the Pia deck with Phoenix. I've built the Pia deck, but I feel like uh, in my local area, nobody else has built it yet, but I think it's gonna it's gonna be really popping off soon, I think. Yeah, I definitely think so too. Yeah, the matchup, the matchup does not feel super good, um, especially with like Chain of the Rocks exiling your stuff. Uh, they they come down pretty fast, but I think sideboard it gets better, right? You you've got some uh, you've got some sweepers that you can bring in and things like that. Because me, I brought two guys over to the house, uh, one of them being Nate, and um, we jammed a lot of games. I mean, we played for four hours straight, and uh, didn't play a ton of sideboard because I don't have a ton of sideboard. But um, the games we the games we got in felt a lot better. But the game ones, man, they were they were pretty rough. It was it was definitely they were pretty fast for you and. Um, Although a lot of the pumps are sorcery speed, like I said, you if, unless you see all your, even if you see most of your your red removal spells, it can be tough. It honestly seems like Pia would struggle a little bit with decks like Grease Fang that have kind of been hated out of the meta a little bit, just simply because like they don't actually have an instant speed way to interact with Grease Fang or with like well. 
they're only instant speed removal doing two damage with bone crusher or play with fire. Right. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a deck. really, really key. That's a really, really key insight um, because Nate obviously is a Grease Fang lover. So we, we jammed that matchup a ton too. That matchup was definitely much better for Grease Fang than it was for um, the Pia deck, which led me to want to play uh, Reckless Rage. Which Reckless is one of Rage or the... uh, Fiery Impulse. Right. Right, right. Which one? So the, made the removal spells of choice Chain to the Rocks and then Reckless Rage. And don't get me wrong, you had to draw quite a few of them <laughs> in order to, to make that matchup reasonable. Because, yeah, unfortunately, it's very, very hard to kill a rat. A lot easier to the sideboard with rending volleys and things like that. But that was definitely a um, a key thing was if, if Pia starts taking over, Grease Fang is kind of the counter to it, just with how consistently you can, you can combo off there. This deck looks like it just eats Rakdos midrange alive. Pia, with just the number of cards that go up in cards, right? Uh, ways to answer, ways to answer cards like uh, Shieldred, right? Yeah. And like Showdown of the Scalds just seems like such a brutal card to like land against a Rakdos player, right? Yeah, I, I think one of the big things too is right. I mean, Pia being three toughness, so she dodges Stomping Giant. So you have to like save she dodges, your push. Also, dodges the Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, you have to have a second blood tie. You have to have a second blood token. So, like, it's pretty big where your opponent, like, is almost pressured into not using a fatal push or other rules spell early. Um, so they can just potentially just take more damage from your prowess guys while you, like, wait to get the PL online. Right. And I think we've talked about it a lot on the show, but I think the best way to beat um, Rakdos midrange, right, back when that was the big boogeyman of the format is you just have to go over them at any point in the game. You just need to net more cards over them. A deck designed to, like, one for one forever, if you start drawing two to four cards for every card you play, right? Even just getting Thopters for every card you're playing out of Exile is kind of huge, right? It's a big yeah. game against Rakdos. Um, and then the thing is save your removal for the big, stupid Apocalypse children. Yeah. The other thing, too, is, like, your, your value engine isn't giving you damage from, from Shieldred. So you're you're not incurring the extra damage from drawing cards like some of the other decks do, because you're just all your card advantage is from exiling cards and playing them from exile. So that's another benefit yeah. of playing the deck. The, the the bigger thing there though is that your opponent's gaining life less you dying. Like you're definitely the aggro deck there. So like you still want to kill Shieldred because if like if they do save some blood tokens, then they're drawn to gaining two life on their turn, gaining two life when they crack a blood token, things like that. So Right, you and you have want clean to get answers, children, but at least you're not dying. So you know, Thopper tokens can fly over the top. So I like this deck a lot. I've got it built myself. Um, uh, just love playing it. It's very fun. Uh, I mean, even just small things like even Gigantha. Just like being able to play Gigantha in your sideboard, it's just another card you can take. And even though you're playing twenty lands, you'll often get a lot of lands in play. Right. Flooding can be a problem with the amount of just, like, cards that you look at, you know? Right. You, you're going to need to run a minimum amount so that you see some, because you really want to hit that second and third. But you're really, like, so you can you can hit the quick aggro hands, and those are ones that, you know, you, you need to know when when it's time to, like, mulligan to those hands, because if you don't beat down, you're there. But a lot of times, you're much more of a mid-range deck. Like, you put a clock on early, and it just feels like you have the reach with some of those extra draw spells and showdown and Pia to kind of start going around. Like, if, some, if they start coming up the ground, then you're you're go, you're flying over the top. Um, if they are killing some of your spells, well, Showdown's going to just win you the game with card advantage, and then all of a sudden you cast spells, and you know you hit one threat off that, you can just get to go all in, all in on that one. So um, I really like the deck. I think that I'm not sure how well it matches up into Sacrifice. I've heard different things from different people. Um, it feels like I almost want to play like a little more conservative with like a protection spell um, against Rakdos Sack, but you do see a lot of cards, and maybe maybe that's the difference. But um, here you can see there was four Rakdos sack in the top eight, and Pia came out on top. So I'm I'm real interested to see because that's one matchup I didn't get to test. I tested a lot against Phoenix, a lot against. I, I think I think the big thing with the Pia matchup against against Sack is again I I think Shard of the Scalds is very important in that matchup because once you start getting creatures out of Mayhem Devil range, like that's a big deal because. You're, you know, like you're worried about Rakdos sacking to the point where they're just going to start machine gunning down 
the the thought that you're making. But if you're if you're making these guys into two twos, three threes, or whatever, like it's hard for the deck to to get get rid of those, especially when you you just play another card with another thopter, right? So I think Shadow of the Scalds is Shadow of the Scalds, Kamon faces Coxon, uh, just putting counters on things is very hard for Rakdos deck to keep up with, especially when they only are playing uh, three claim the firstborn now. Right. I think the big thing in that matchup is just keeping Mayhem Devil off the board, no matter what you whatever you it takes, right? Mm-hmm. That's the card that kind of beats you, but like the cauldron familiar like board stall, right? Isn't gonna be very strong against you when you're making a bunch of thopters and attacking in the air with like pumped up thopter tokens, you know? Mm-hmm. You just gotta I think the matchup might be like interesting. I'd like to study it more, but like and we can definitely do that this weekend, hopefully to a, a success for one of y'all. Yeah. But uh I like where the format's kind of tilting right we found what beats you know after many rcqs or rcs right we have found that like rakdos mid-range is kind of like falling out of favor and now we've got new we need to to discover uh a new rakdos you know yeah well look at how many cards like card advantage just is taking over right like look like Again, the Pia deck sees a lot of cards. You've got eight eight draw twos in there, yeah. you know? Uh, more, and you can play more, right? If you want to play the uh, 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 light up the stage, you can't. A lot of players aren't anymore, but you definitely, you know, it's an option. Is it Phoenix? Sees a lot of cards. Rakdos sack. You got Lucky Witness. You got uh, the sack draw uh, two. He, treasure I something. think you would note he's an unlucky witness, sir. <laughs> Unlucky witnesses. That's what I was getting at. So he's getting he's getting sacrificed. So, I mean, a lot of these decks focus on, like, playing a lot of spells right? It's a lot of, you know, machine gun kind of spell stuff in uh, Rakdos Midrange just doesn't keep up like that, right? It deals with it deals with your right. early threats and then lands a shieldred and then, you know, it, it. we've always talked about it's one-for-ones, right? You guys said, hey, it's a one-for-one one deck. So all of these decks, except for maybe Azoria Spirits that are in the top eight, given that half of them are Rakdos Sack, all draw a lot of cards. They play a lot of cards early, they draw a lot of cards, they're going to see whatever their key to the matchup is, and that feels like where the where the matchup's going now. Um, I've also seen, like, there's an Azorius deck that we'll see in a couple places here that's like, hey, while you're getting on the board early, I'm going to make six mana, and then from there I'm going to throw Haymakers. And that's kind of going bigger than green is, and that feels kind of like maybe maybe some of the answer. But I think you guys are right, but that's that's what I see as the key, is a lot of these decks have card advantage built in. Right. And I kind of like that as a format. It's nice to see, like, the decks are just sort of find your card advantage where you can, keep pressing damage, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, like this is not Pia is not like a I win by turn four, I win by turn five, I lock out the game board, right? Yeah. This is like a deck that just sort of sits around and just gains advantage, 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 advantage until it runs you over, right? Yeah, I yeah, like it, the, it can it, move fast, right? It yeah, has you got yeah. the prowess creatures. You you definitely can move fast. I, I think you put a lot of early pressure on. And then, like I said, the big deal is you, you have the reach to finish off with your Pia's. Like, you can consistently make four or five Thopters and fly in for five damage one at a time. Yeah, four I, mana I, draw four is strong. Uh, honestly, when we did that episode of cards that people should be playing in Pioneer, I'm kind of amazed we all missed this one. Yeah. What were you saying, Ruckman? I, I was going to say, like, I, I think, obviously, like, it's not an exact one-to-one, but I think there are a lot of similarities in kind of what the Pia deck is doing and what the Rakdos deck is doing, and that they're just like these low to the curve, like lower lower curve kind of just grind fest decks, right? And I think that's why they're finding a lot of success. And like if you look at this top thirty two, right, we got Rakdos sacrificed twenty five percent of the meta with eight decks, and then number two is other, which is exciting, right? Yeah. And Rakdos which, in, which includes the Boros decks, right? Rakdos midrange is all the way down there at at six percent, two decks in the top thirty-two, right? Three three mono white, three Azorius spirits, two Brawl boats, two Azorius control. Some mono black ag, some mono black people, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, let's move over to Sunday now. Looking at Makubi on blue black control in seventh place, we have Toltar on five color fires in sixth place we have jabberwocky on rakdos sacrifice in fifth place we have draken on rakdos boats 
In fourth place, we have WK Midori on Lotus Field. In third place, we have Scatter TF2 on Boros Pia. In second place, we have Young Dingo on Esper Control. And then in first place, we have Deneb Lyre, or Deneb Lyre on Abzan Greasefang. This yep. is the Lotus Field Control deck in second place. Yep. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah, there's uh, there's just two thought distortions in the sideboard. Ah, okay, sure. Thank you, uh, Goldfish. Ooh, one of Sphinx's rev now. Why not? Oh, you Yo, got what? the mana. You got the mana, right? And, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, when everybody's playing Pia, I think that Grease Fang is definitely a great deck to be playing. Uh, yeah. Very interesting... Uh, build their main decking a Shieldred now. Also playing Collective Brutality, which I don't think they've been playing before. Yeah. I like um, the build. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the, let's just talk about the sweep, the sweeper choices here and the Asper builds. We've got two Doom Scar, two Sunfall, three Farewell, nary a Supreme Verdict. Well, you can't cast Supreme Verdict off of Lotus Field because you need. Too many colors of mana. Right. But you can cast Doom Scar off of one Lotus Field if you foretold it the previous turn. Like you can tap your two lands for Foretell and then play your Lotus. Yeah. yeah. So I, I agree with this. And then like uh, Sunfall is just, and Farewell are just kind of better if you're going to tap two lands to play them right. Sure. Right. In a world where all your lands just tap for three mana. Yeah, what are all the board wipes cost two mana, right? Sure. Yeah. So, so might as well play the better ones. Yeah. What else we got in this top end? I mean, like we said, we have also it's... regular hidden strings. I mean, not a not a bad deck to be playing. I think I think we've been saying for a while now that like, if, if you're a Lotus Field player, I think now is kind of your time to be looking to succeed. I mean, That's I think really I think good. if we see some of these decks become popular too, like I think red green, you know. Uh, I'm not sure that I want to be playing red green in a world of Recto sacrifice for like all my powerful cards are three drops that happen to get claimed to faint. You know, I think that would that would shift the meta a lot. But um, if Pia becomes the more popular deck, uh, then then I would like something like this. I would like a big creature deck, especially playing something with trample to just go, hey, you know, I've got a bigger guy, right? Like it takes you a little longer I'll to develop. Tell, I'll tell you what card uh, Sack can't beat though. What's that? That's Thrunbreaker Silence. Yeah, yeah. The uh, it's loud. There is no silence when Thrun's around. That uh, yeah, that that card's got a lot of text. Can't be countered. Trample, hexproof from non-green stuff. Indestructible. Right my turn. You ain't blocking it to death. That's for sure. You know. What did you see, Ricky? Right here in fifth place. Uh huh. Roll mid range, right? Yep. Yeah. Obstacles. Sideboard. Yep. One of Grohl Charm. Checkmate atheists. Wizards were no, right the I, whole time. No, I, I mean, like I, I said, Grohl no, Charm. I know, I play. Know. It's it's your anti spirit sideboard. Yeah. I know. You I was just even, joking. You couldn't even give me Rakdos Charm so I could blow out all those those twin players? All those twin players. I really like Miz and Mortars. Honestly, like if we're playing Sorcery Speed Removal, let's play Miz and Mortars so we can blow out our opponent's late game, right? Yeah, Miz, Miz was really yep. hot. Uh, I'm kind of like flirting with Grohl Vehicles. It's a deck that I, I like to take out, you know? Sure. On a Friday yep. night, have have a great time, right? Yeah, but yeah. I don't want to make a commitment to the deck, right? Yeah, you you want you want to keep it around, make sure it's still available, but right, it's you know, they're storm seeking, they're thrill seeking, you know, they're maze crushing out there, and you know, I'm just not sure if I'm ready for that lifestyle, but it's fun to uh, it's fun to have it for a night, you know? Right. You just don't want your main deck to find out about it. Is that what you're telling exactly, me? Exactly, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll just put it out there. I think that Roll Boats, I think it gets like laughed at a lot because I think a lot of people just don't know what to say about the deck. But I think the deck's just really, really solid at all points in time. Playing I think it's like Arena, I just, I love it. It feels so good. Voltaire and Thrillseeker really made the deck for me. Like, you can just, your opponent's dead and they don't even know how dead they are. Like, this is, in my opinion, now the most like "oops, you died" deck in Pioneer. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so. Sky Sovereign does so a lot, right? Like, if, if we're gonna go to like, hey, here's a card advantage creature decks. Right. Um, Sky Sovereign then, and Chariot. What's that? Sky Sovereign and Chariot. No, I hear you, but Sky Sovereign's where I'm looking at. Like, well, this kills Mayhem Devils. It kills Pia's. 
right? Sky Sovereign is is kind of the card we want to kind of to kind of get in there. Just, you know, it blocks the doctors just, with four one one counters on them. It sure does. It sure does. I just want to like a crone war my opponent's shields with and throw a secret away. Yeah, I've done it. It's so much fun. <laughs> I, I mean, like I, I don't think I've ever given something back on a crow and war. Yeah, right, 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 right. I don't know. Like, if your opponent gets their creature back on step three, you've messed up somewhere. You done goofed. Yeah, exactly. you done goofed somehow, yeah. some way, right? And like Thronebreaker of Silence is such a scary card as a blue red player. I like have nightmares of this guy, of just like. Uh, I've got this game locked up. I've got a lightning axe in hand. I've got a uh, change the equation. And then it's just like Thrun. I'm like, well, this game could be over. Can I can I turn your attention to uh, 17th place where someone's out here still trying to play Angels? God bless them. them. Just, yeah, them about, like, just, to show it, just said the same thought. You're just, you know, salute. Give them the, give them the, uh, the pioneer salute, you know? Yeah. I absolutely hate this deck. This deck is so miserable to play it's against. The pioneer salute, just the middle finger. Sorry, that's the wizard salute. Oh man, this. Uh, I think the deck is good. I do still think this deck is good. It's just annoying, and it just gets people. But I think as we've become less of an aggro racing format and more of a card advantage format, this deck just yeah. gets bad. It's like, sure, go to eighty life. I've got yeah. removal spells. I've got chain to the rocks. Right. Yeah, I've but got like, a million thopters. Some decks can't deal with this, a.k.a. Phoenix. Just can't deal with this, you know. And some decks don't care. They're like, I'll make my own angels, and they come in a car, right? Sure. And then, uh, yeah, 24th place. Your master's reprint on Resplendent Angel, right? Oh, please. Uh, 20, 24th place, though, Storm Herald. This deck is spicy. It's a very yeah. fun, very fun graveyard deck. Otherworldly gaze, you love to see it. Uh, we got, I mean, kind of last thoughts on uh, on Pia. Uh, I don't like to really, you know, I'm gonna I'm break a little bit of the remix, but uh, if you're a swag bag Patreon member, maybe maybe hold off on those Pias. Oh man, unless you got, got an to... RCQ this weekend, then buy them, you know, then, then get them. Yeah, we got uh, is this the same player that second place it? Second place it. It yeah, is. Yeah, ALMTG, yeah. It's their same, uh, the same list here. Yeah. I like the list. Uh, they got some Drakes, but they do have Sahili. They believe in the Sahili, let me tell you. It's true. Yeah, I think I think where we're going wrong here is like, in, and again, in this metagame, is that that four Ledger Shredder needs to be four Thing in the Ice. Like, See, I, I've been like super in on Thing in the Ice, but you know what the worst thing in the world is? Getting it stolen. Racto Sacrifice. Right. I, I, I hear you. The, I've had it stolen and flipped on me in many games. So I'm like, right now in my Phoenix builds right now, like, I mean, one, I'm currently cheating on Phoenix with uh, Kari Zev and Brawl. And we're right. having a good time. Right. But uh, if I were to go to an RCQ tomorrow, right, I'd be rolling up with two Ledger Shredder, three Demi Lich, and I'd be running some things in the sideboard. There's just the Rakdos oh, sacrifice deck is everywhere where, right now. Where, where, where you've messed that up, where you've messed that up, is uh -huh. that the Ledger Shredder dies also. So, like, you you got to keep your thing in the ices for the matchups there free. But Demulich is the truth. I, I am currently playing, I am currently on a, a monstrous 12 threats with three Demulich because that also does not get stolen and cast you cards out of the yard. Um, I, I was playing that, and, and that was an impressive card. Both Nate and our buddy Alex were both like, "Whoa, that card! That card earns its spot for being like, hey, I cast a lot of spells, and if I do and get Phoenix back, like Demi Lich in the hand is also free. And then right. when it does attack, getting to cast like removal spells out of the yard or whatever else, it is like the ultimate mid range card. So um, I, I have been a fan of just like, hey, you know what? We know we're in that matchup. We're gonna discard them. We're gonna sight them out. We're gonna do whatever we're gonna do, and uh, we're gonna rely on our Phoenixes and and our, our Demi Liches to win us that game. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear. Pioneer, you know, RCQ season might be coming to an end here, but Pioneer is definitely in a sweet place. So it's kind of kind of sad that we're going to put it away from the limelight, at least until December when the next regionals start happening. We're gonna be cooking. I'm going to be excited to, like, have some fun, like, do what Ricky's doing. Like, I... I, I, yeah. I I miss the, like, Ricky's still coming out with us, which he doesn't have to do, but I love having Coach Ricky. Like, Coach Ricky, like, greatly increases my play. 
Like I just I feel like I I don't want to disappoint dad, you know. And even sure. though Ricky's even though even though Ricky's years younger than me, you know what I'm saying. I, I feel that, and, it, and I think it helps me focus. So I, I've loved that he's come out. Like you don't have to. Like uh, other people probably wouldn't want to drive three or four hours just to like sit and watch. But uh, I was I was, I was very does. I was very worried to tell Ricky that after dislocating my knee last week that I was like still not going to play. I was not going to play my RCQ. I was like, is, is Ricky going to be disappointed that I don't go? Because my I'm yeah. slightly disappointed, but it's okay. Yeah, we, I we couldn't leave me. my apartment. I the understand. Stairs, no, I the understand. stairs still hurt. I understand. Hey, where, I, where I, I am understand playing. that I would show up to RC's like with one less leg. You know, if if I was <laughs> if I was not on the third floor of my apartment building and like could have gotten down the stairs, I probably would have gone. In all honesty. All right, I, I've got one to share with the class, and I want to get y'all's input as well. Okay, sure. I already know the first deck that I'm brewing once once RCQ season's over. Uh, okay, and I'm calling okay. this deck Rogues But Better in honor of Servo Token. Is it just okay. Because we're going to play Blue Black, uh, uh, but we're either, we might not commit, but we're, we're brewing, right? We're brewing, so don't don't okay, hold sure, me. Sure. Right? We're going to play Delver of Secrets, Ledger Shredder, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, Drown in the Lock, and this is a Treasure Cruise deck. So we're going to run 8 to 12 threats, something like that. None of them are going to be Rogues because those cards are, are medium. Uh, but Ledger Shredder is a great card, right? I think Ledger Shredder is a rogue. What's that? No, he's an advisor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They they out there shred. Um, They're not their rogue. Will it include otherworldly gaze? It might. No. It might. Stop. It, now it, it I might. will he's, say that that is deck's probably more of a prized amalgam deck. Like I think I think uh, Ricky really? could probably brew some some graveyard stuff. I I just want to play fatal pushes. I just want to play a lot of one because like um tainted tainted indulgence is that the card. Yeah. That yeah. card's insane. Like, it's, it's, is it charm is sick because of its versatility? And I really, really like that in Phoenix for the ability to, like, hey, I can counter something early, but it's not like a spell pierce where it just sits dead in your hand. So I really like the versatility there. But I do like what Tainted Indulgence does better for the, I get to keep a card, right? It's obviously better card advantage than the, just some of the play, things, though. Just play the eighth place deck. Play Notion Thief, uh, Narset, Days Undoing. No, we what, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. That's a different deck. This this is a this is rogues but better, Ricky. That's this is rogues but better. This is my first brew of the off season. All right, don't judge me. All right, all right, just all right. just accept me for who I am. Okay. I mean, I'm just gonna I'll be focused on that bard class. <laughs> there you go. You get that bard class, Ricky. What what do you got? What's your brew? You gonna I keep mean, working on the the I, is it I control or the, the brawl? Kari Zev deck is very fun with Chandra. Uh, I've been really. I've got Storm Herald all purchased. I've got yeah. Pia. I've got Convoke. I've got Grohl Vehicles when I'm feeling naughty, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Soul Partition is a good card. Oh, okay. Everybody right. else has told me that I'm the biggest idiot for that, but you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm liking all this, but I'm also out here playing modern. Oh, hold sure. on now, Chris. Chris, can I? Chris, can we sidebar for a second, Ricky? If you, yeah, if we you can, wouldn't mind giving us Ricky, close your ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we do we approve him to go play modern? I, you you actually have to talk louder. I can't hear you. Did, did you did you approve him to get? Did you approve him to go play modern? No, no, I didn't. The, the, then where did he get the? Who signed the slip? I've got a doctor's I note. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it says uh, I'm too competitive to care that I'm playing bad formats. Uh, well, like, you're only I, this. This 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 note, Ricky, only says you can play Lord of the Rings Limited RCQs. Oh yeah, man. I'm excited for Lord of the Rings Limited RCQs, um, also known as Modern Events. You know, those are the... those are gonna be real, those are gonna be real hot. I mean, to be fair, I was pretty excited to play some Modern before the One Ring. I think we'll we'll see how it shakes down. I'm excited for other people to play a couple weeks first. I'll play some of those limited RCQs, and then uh, we'll see how Modern shakes out. And and like I said, I haven't built a Modern deck in a while. I probably will build something, but I am excited to kind of take a, take a few months off and brew, you know? I really do think in like all full real talk here, right? Yeah. I think that like modern is not as fun as pioneer by like a long shot. Uh, I think that it's annoying how, how dead set modern players are against pioneer. I don't think you have to think it's the best format, but like to completely dismiss it, it's kind of annoying. So mm -hmm. as a, as a response, I do the opposite. For right. We joke. We're joking. <laughs> but the <laughs> thing is, uh, We're there playing I will literally play any competitive format that is currently up in the rotation. I'm happy to share, right? Uh, you know, 
one last time. George Washington was like, you know, I've had a lot of fun in Pioneer, but it's modern's turn to try, right? Yeah, sure, sure. So, you know, I, I'm i not going to be like, you know, I, I might get salty. I'm not going to lie. I can't promise I won't say something salty when I lose to the one ring in a modern RCQ. But I am going to go at the format as as deeply as I go in Pioneer because that's a competitive format and I want to be competitive, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm still going to be talking Pioneer and going to my Pioneer locals because that's what's fun, right? I, I'm I, playing that is the, that is... I'm not there to play. I'm literally there to play as little magic as possible. Right. I think, I think that's the big thing is keep on your stores just because Pioneer is in the RC format. Like, keep, keep Pioneer Nights going. Even if the store doesn't want to run one, just show up if they have play space, organize one yourselves. Like, you have to keep making the point happen. You can't just let the format go into a box. Like, I'm really excited now because, um, you know, I my my magic time is very... My time to go play events is really limited. So now I get to trade RCQs for going and playing, like, FNMs essentially again. And but I'm, like, excited. Yes, you know, you can play Pioneer on your own time because Pioneer is on Arena now. You yeah. know? So thankfully, I was, you don't I was have gonna to say well, I'm going to play Explorer, yeah. but uh, I think I'm not going to do that now. Yeah, I think uh, and I will re- say I, I do think I want to take this opportunity during the Pioneer off season, and I think we'll. I'm going to try to give them as at least as once a month again as possible, but I think we might use the down season to maybe run some webcam monthly events again. I think that's I think a great we'll, idea. I like yeah, that. I will, we'll my personal involved. goal is to build a commander deck. And uh, if if I can find something that I like, I kind of want to play some Pia in Modern and see how see how that goes. See if there's any cute ways to to make that happen. Because um, like there's some prowess stuff you can do, right? There's definitely some yeah. things there. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to kind of see, right? Maybe play my Ragavans. Maybe I'll get some Ragavans and uh, and play Pia that way. You know, some one ranks. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. I'll tell you what my my real plan is though. out there. You know, but I I think I think we have a unique opportunity to see if like hey if if you have you know. Um, if you have your tax return check and you want to spend it on magic cards, what, That's already what gone. modern deck? <laughs> That's, That's gone. What modern deck do you want to to play? I think we could breathe like as somebody who you know I only play Pioneer right now. If I dive into modern, what feels good? Like I think we have a unique opportunity to say, hey, from a Pioneer player's perspective, or is there anything that makes sense to play in modern that kind of has that feel that you'll be able to pick up more naturally? And hopefully we can offer some things there, but. A lot of our listeners that, I, that I've met in real life play a lot of modern anyway, so that may or may not be useful. But like I said, a, a lot of players are more casual, and I hopefully hopefully we'll have something to offer there as well as you know share some adventures in in webcam events and and uh, and commander even a little bit. You know, uh, real talk though, my main plan is to blow up in Grand Archive and yeah. pretend like <laughs> I don't, like know, I no don't know nobody. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! <laughs> Next uh, week, I, throw back. Get the teeth uh, done so you can make the joke even better. Yeah. yeah no, I yeah. honestly like I've been I I bought you could I be bought, rough raff. <laughs> I could it's be rough raff, but you know it's anyway. Yeah. I could I could be rough raff. Uh, I I bought the boys tabletop simulus so we can start playing some uh, some grand archive. Yes, thank on, you for that. Uh, thank on you tabletop that. sim, uh, I'm gonna try to mess around with it a little bit. I'm gonna maybe try to. Honestly, like I think the RCQ downtime is going to get me back into making a lot more content stuff. Um, I have the the video series I've been like trying to get done with my wife. Uh, will hopefully finally start rolling out this week. Um, also, great time to talk about Pia. Chris's. If you're listening to this episode, Chris's uh, deck tech is going to be on the YouTube channel by now. By the time you hear this episode, so be sure to go check that out. Um, it's not up yet when we're recording, but I'll have it up uh, next day or so by the time this episode airs. Um, Are we going to much stuff up this weekend? What's up? Are we going to a two slot this weekend? Uh, it's a one slot. Oh, well, one of you's got to qualify. Yeah. And then all three of us um, are going to go to Atlanta. I mean, yeah, this is this is going to pay for my trip to Atlanta now. Heck yeah, heck yeah. We go uh, to the world of Coke. Woo! I'm going to set the alarm off. Uh, uh. Only I'm going to succeed where Matthew failed. Yeah, don't touch the safe. Anyways. I mean, uh, I, I'm excited. I just, and like, the thing is, Pioneer off season is going to be over before you know it because I mean, yeah. the next RC, which this is the worst part about the DreamHack system, right? Mm-hmm. Is this weird, awkward, like, so you're qualified for Atlanta. They're fixing well, it though. Like, this is the last one that's going to be like this. They're going to redistribute them a little more next year. So I think what's going to happen, right? Or they add a fourth I, one? No, they're not going to add a fourth one because that's just not what 
uh, I think what's going to happen is it's going to be uh, essentially what we're going to see is modern is going to feed into the California dream hack, which is going to be the modern one. Um, the next season will feed into standard, which will be Dallas and then pioneer will feed into pioneer. So I think formats are just going to do each other. And I think we're just going to see like a three format cycle. No, no, no. I mean like the weird, awkward, uh, I've got like 30 years before Atlanta happened. Oh, like yeah. I qualified like, uh, first week that's, of June. That's, that's not a problem with dream hack. That's a problem with just the system in general. Right. Well, I mean, they just, they schedule it like that because they schedule it around the dream hacks. We need a fourth I, I, dream I, hack. Dream hack. We can take over some other city. What's some, dream, what's ha- some... dream hack has more than just that than just Atlanta, though. No, they don't. They've got Dallas, San Diego. They only have the, three. Uh, no, they do like several. So they do a fourth one. Uh, I mean, there's some internationally, but they do other ones too. Oh well, I only care about America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Also, I I do want to take a quick second to say, like, also just. If you are hitting the burnout point, that's also not a bad thing. Like, I also advocate take breaks when you need to take a break. Like, sure. don't, don't force yourself. Warcraft with me. You know? Don't force. No, play, play, we're playing Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. Uh, don't don't force yourself to engage in the game if you're not having fun. If you need to get out for a bit, like, go do it. Go touch grass. Go touch other games. Uh, come 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 play Grand Archive. Yeah. Watch the Willy Wonka movie. Go Don't. see Wonka. There's no way we're endorsing that movie. Yeah, we we just did. Oh my god. I will buy the host of Crew 3 tickets to see Wonka, just like I did with Fast the Furious. Oh yeah. Did I? Did we not pay you back for those? No. Oh. I feel bad. I used, <laughs> no, I used my free Cinemark credits. Oh yeah, Cinemark. Shout out to Cinemark. Shout out to Cinemark memberships. Um, they don't make popcorn buckets out of, uh, world ending devices. Yeah. Out of war crimes. Out, yeah. Out of buffs of mass destruction. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, any, anything else you guys want to talk about before we kind of wrap things up here? Let's before, wrap so it we, up. So we, so we don't end on war crimes and weapons of mass destruction. Pioneer is sick. Go play it. Uh, Pioneer and have fun sick. with it. You know, there's still like Go two more it. weekends of RCQs too. Yeah. So it's, it's not over. out there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's well, some... of Oh, good. Uh, so Chris and Ruckman are going to qualify, and it's going to be good. Woo! I'm just more excited to watch Speed Racer. Why are you not excited for Speed Racer? I am excited for Speed Racer, but I'm also excited about victory. Yeah, but I want to talk about my religion and being a <laughs> real race car driver. All right, do we have a Patreon? Yeah, we do. Of course, we have sponsored us for Patreon, patreon.com slash crew3mtg. We've got several great tiers available. Uh, whichever one best fits you, what you can do. It helps out whatever you do, and you got several great uh, kind of rewards available, whichever tier you get. And, of course, everyone gets access to the Patreon um, channels on the Discord. We ask uh, for episode ideas, stuff like that. Um, everyone, of course, also gets access to the Patreon mailbag, where Kidwin asks us the question, what rare land cycle would you want reprinted into Pioneer? The Zendikar fetches to ban them. <laughs> That'd be good. Oh, a rare like, land what are, cycle. What are, what are we missing? What are we missing? Uh, we're missing the Urza lands. The Urza lands? Like Is that considered the... a cycle? Cabal like, Coffers, Gaia's Cradle, Ib Sanctum of Oh, Maria. I thought you were talking about, like, Tron. No, no, no. Not, I'm talking about Sarah Sanctum, Cabal Coffers. I would not mind Tron and Pioneer. Yeah? Um, We don't have Expedition Map, right? We do have Someone's Crying. We don't have Expedition Map. Don't you... Does Table work? Does Table, table only find Basics? Mistress Table. What does Mistress Table do? Mistress Table? Does it, doesn't it Mistress whatever find lands... Like his bench, his work yes. bench. Yeah. It just it just impulse draws you. It, like you exile oh, okay. two cards and you get to pick one. Gotcha. It has flashback. Um, but for artifacts on Earth. Gotcha. Um I wouldn't mind seeing Tron and Pioneer because I like the trope of uh cards that have been crept out of power in you know, a horizons era modern, right? Sure. Just ending up in Pioneer. 
I really think Snapcaster is really safe to to print and to pioneer. I, you know, at this point, I'd probably agree with you. You know, I, I think that, like, Confidant would also be safe to print and to pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, I can see Confidant. I can see Confidant being safe to print and to pioneer. Like, we I just get, think that... Like, we can get Goyf. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, not Stoneforge, probably. No, no. we can do yeah. Stoneforge. We don't, we don't have any of the... Batter Skull. No Batter Skull. Yeah. Like, I'm just it's saying, like... Swords. There's probably some good birthing pod deck, you yeah. know. I'm just saying that, oh, like, I don't think we can play. I don't think we can put pod in. <laughs> but Urza's Tron lands like that cycle just tower sure. mine power plant right. I would like hit them with would, the factory for the cycle, right? If we didn't have the monocolored man lands, I would almost say the allied man lands would be interesting. Like colonnade, razor, yeah, colonnade. Yeah. Uh, Creeping Carpet. Raging Ravine. Yeah. Yeah. Those would be interesting, too. I mean, the the enemy ones see no play, but I do think Raging Ravine is, like... I mean, I think Raging Ravine is power crept. I think Lair is just way better. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I think the monocolor ones kind of outpace all of them right Colonnade, now. Colonnade, though. Colonnade is Col- probably still good. Col- yeah, I think Colonnade would see play. Um, would you be interested in, like, the Canopy Lands? No. Yeah. I think they're a little degenerate. Mm-hmm. Um, as somebody who's like playing six of them in burn right now, like it's just like it free free cards, right? Sure. What it kind of like, like goes against the like. I think that modern is a four or not modern pioneers a format where like you're, you're going to want to get to four to five lands over the course sure. of the game, right? So like I I don't see that being what we want. What what are like what's the original con we got with land cycle with like um the original Igonjo Obero. They just care about legendary creatures. They just yeah. buff a legendary creature each time. You can't do those because fear is a dead mechanic. Oh, true. Yeah. But what about um, a Treetop Village? Treetop Village. Uh, I think we already have the blue fairy one. Fairy Conclave. No, we don't have Fairy Conclave. The blue one wasn't reprinted because I thought it was in a, an Ascendancy combo, but that's when I see. I, I would be interested in like taking away the the Triumphs. Like, I want to be gone with Triumphs and put triumphs. in a different slot there. Maybe see, it's I like the. Maybe it's like the Eventide lands or like the filter lands or something like that. But Those are so funky. They're not fun to play. If if wow, people played them. We used to play them all the time. If yeah, we, we were to, we had to. If we were playing, if we were just adding, I would think like a treetop village or something like that would be the way to go. Um, whatever that line cycle was, because like I said, the, the green one and the blue one seemed good. What was the red one? I don't even remember what the red one did. Uh you camp it, it's a two one with first strike. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. spawning pool or spawning Pit is a 1-1 one, one that regenerates, and for Boating Watchtower is a 1-4 that if it blocks, your creature doesn't untap, and uh, Fairy Conclave becomes a 2-1 flyer. 2-1 flyer, yeah, yeah. Good memory, good memory. Now, Ricky's having himself. I'm happy. I'm proud of you too, Ricky. We'll take a second to appreciate that, that Ricky. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that's like the, if there was a cycle we were going to add, it's that. But the main thing is I'd want to remove the Triumphs and replace them with some, like, so, slightly worse. I'd uh, fight for Tron Lands to add in. And the, like... Maybe the thing is, like, I, I think the Triomes is like so good. I like Triomes a lot. Like, I wouldn't wish Vivid Lands back on the people. I wouldn't wish Filter Lands back on people. Right? Yeah. Um. um would you? Oh, I'm, I just lost what I was going to say. What I was going to say. Would you? Would you ever put like Cavern or Besage you in? Like who shelters all Cavern of Souls? Yeah. No. Neither of those. Yeah. Uh, is Sliverhive not legal? Uh, one of them is. Sliverhive is like M13, right? Yeah, it's Sliverhive. Uh, I think Sliverhive We have is like Mirex, is... though. Mirex pops out one ones for three mana. Sliverhive, uh, mainly just for the Sliver deck. Sure. And Sliverhive is, because Hive Lord is M15. It's the same as Hive Lord, so yeah. Okay. It is M14, so it is legal. I don't remember yeah. if it was M13 or M14, so. 15. Yeah, that card's already legal. Um, Let's get the say, Eldrazi lands. No, no, no. I like the original Zendikar uh, lands that should have been legendary but weren't. Oh, Valakut? I think that, honestly, I think they would be really fun. Uh, Valakut. Steamshift um, is Pioneer legal. Is it? Yeah. yeah. 
they were uh, okay, we can't <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Crypt of Agadim and Orian Re Fastwood are really good. And Amiria the Sky Ruin is a really cool card, Ooh, right? Yeah, Amiria uh-huh. is an and interesting. And like Magosi the Water Veil can go see the Water Veil. But you right, know, right, right. Uh, you know, I guess we can't do Valakuk Escape Shifters in the format. Oops. But uh, <laughs> but the other ones are really good. I like them a lot. Like Oran Reef uh, taps for green, or you can tap it to put a 1 1 counter on every creature that enters the battlefield this turn, uh, which is cool. And Amiria, of course, reanimate every turn if you have seven planes in play, which is exciting. And uh, Crypt of Agadim adding mana equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard is very fun. Uh, there was like a really interesting cycling deck way back when that played Crypt of Agadim in standard, where you just like cycled all these black creatures and then uh, made a bunch of black mana and like unearthed everything, right? So mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like those lands. I guess we have to find a replacement for the Valakut in the cycle. But ultimately, I think my answer, my answer, final answer is going to be the Tron lands. Nobody expected that answer. True. Nobody saw that one. Ricky from the top ropes. Yeah. Chris, what's, what's your final answer? Final answer, because the best one that I can think of that I think, you know, would be would be reasonably strong, but not overpowered is the uh, the single color man lands. From Urza's. Yeah. Treetop Village, Fairy Conclave, that kind of thing. Um, man, I'm just going to say it's just to, like, complete a cycle, but I'm just going to say the allied band lands, like, yeah, just, just so we have complete me. cycles. Um, and I, I do think, like, you know, um, Raging Ravine probably is getting outclassed now, but I do think, like, Colony would be interesting for the control decks over having to play, um, Hall of Storm Giants. Would any of the uncommon lands from Ravnica, like, mean anything to y'all? Uh, that's uh, like, like Sun Home and stuff like that. Sun Home, Rick's Medea, those lands. I don't even remember what they do. There, there's the uh, the I colorless lands from, that were like. What about the um the one where we we pay four mana, we give stuff death touch, or the. Oh, like the uh, the Innistrad do something. The Innistrad, the Innistrad yeah. might be good. Like I'd be interested in Gavany. Gavany, uh, and also like adding a uh, Slayer Stronghold, the Haunt. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make spirits out of your like, dead creatures. I'd also say Ghost yard. Quarter. Mm, I don't know about Ghost Quarter. We have Ramunap and Azusa. We have sure. Ramunap Excavator and Crucible of Worlds and Azusa. And, like, as somebody who played a lot of very fringe extended decks back in the day, sure. I will tell you that this deck is very good, as dumb as it looks, you know? Yeah. All right. Anyways. Well, I think. Good yeah, answers. I think that'll do it for this week. Um, good question. Channel, Thank you. Yeah, good question. Uh, and again, uh, patreon.com screw the MTG. Get all your questions asked and answered. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. John, where can they find all the socials? You, you, can't, can find, you can't find me anymore. You can find oh. me on Twitter and not threads. At oh. also Steve. And you can find me streaming once a week on our gaming Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash crew 3 mtg Chris is unfindable. Chris, Chris is unfindable. And of course, you can find me at Crew3 Podcast on Twitter. Also at Crew3 MTG on threads where I post occasionally. I just kind of I'm kind of just parking it until they they fix it because threads has threads isn't Twitter just yet. It needs a couple things. But uh we're we're parking there for now. Um yeah, uh, be sure to check us out. Like Ricky said, streaming Ricky streams once a week over on Twitch. And of course, I run our YouTube channel where I'm uploading things like Chris's deck text the video version of the podcast which comes out about every Monday and then hopefully we'll get some more content coming out there uh, to the YouTube channel so be sure to check that out also youtube.com slash crew3mtg thank you all for listening we'll talk to you all next week bye bye bye